Also statt TikTok ist es jetzt äh, Stop, Stop Test und that's a direct test? Yeah, that's a direct test, yeah. And, and if, we were, if it were an indirect test, we'd have to collect the blood from all of us. Because of course, we don't do it. Not even for the inner lab we're supposed to report. Now, uh, what's interesting though is, let's say you do get your blood collected and they're looking, do you have antibodies or some, for something? Um, they're not just looking, do you have antibodies? We want to know how much you've got in there. And because as you know, if you have a current infection, your antibodies keep getting made. Versus if it's an old infection, they are just dropping off. And so we, we need to know a little bit more than just are there antibodies to that thing there. And so they do what's called an antibody titer. And so they take their serum and they dilute it. And they dilute it by a lot. Like this is only going to one to 640. They'll dilute it well into the thousands. And they do have a glutination <coughs> test um, where the antibody can agglutinate at a certain point if uh, there's enough of them there, enough concentration of them. So where that agglutination stops is the antibody titer. So it's telling us, so uh, so here you notice there's no agglutination there. This is kind of on the borderline here. So this, so maybe, so you can see here, um, maybe the titer here would be one to 160. And then if it's past that, then it's not gluten-eating anymore. So that's what would be um, reported out. If you're actually sick with that microbe and they take another antibody test like a day or so later, it's gonna, it's gonna figure out more concentration and so we're gonna get a, a number that's more diluted and still we can agglutinate the antibody. And you may have heard of ELISA test, and ELISA stands for Enzyme Linked Immunosorbent Assay Test. And a lot of these tests, you know, they're kind of similar to the fluorescent antibody test. You can either take um, antibodies from the patient's serum and expose them to the antigen, or the other way you can get the microbe from the patient and expose it to the antibody. And in all of this is um, an antibody that's got an enzyme linked to it that will bind and we add a substrate which will change color if it is positive. Whereas our fluorescent antibody test, the antibody has fluorescence on it, we see the fluorescence of this there. But this, uh, the substrate turns to a product which changes the color there. So both the fluorescent antibody test and the ELISA test can be run as a direct test or an indirect test. It just depends on what you start with. We start with a serum sample from our patient that has antibodies, and that's an indirect test. If we have some sample from wherever in the body that has a micro, then that's going to be a direct test. And they're quick. So the fluorescent antibody and ELISA test are pretty quick to run here. If we were to like to leave the secondary antibodies as well, where could the fluorescent test run? Uh, we can actually have a stacked one too. It depends on if it's a direct or an indirect test, if we have a stacked one. So um, what happens here is um, in this particular one, this is an indirect test. We've got the antigen that comes in the kit. We have the patient specimen, which has the antibodies that bind, but of course we can't see to that. And then that's where the secondary antibody comes in with the enzyme. If this were a fluorescent antibody test, this would have a fluorescent one. You guys have a lot of good any other questions about what goes on in the clinical lab? <coughs> and this last one, I think you already know a lot about because we've had those um, morbidity and mortality weekly reports, but we've, we've learned a lot about um, what happens in public health. Thank <laughs> you.